Ubisoft is leaning more into free-to-play, and Rogue Company rolls back their previous patch. All that and more, my name's Ethos, and these are your top five stories for this week's Free-to-Play Weekly. Coming in at number five, about a week ago when First Watch Games dropped the Mac update for Rogue Company, they not only introduced the update's brand new Rogue, but also several balance changes that affected the game's average time to kill. Now these changes consisted of increasing the amount of body damage various weapons in the game could deal out, and were intended to decrease the amount of ammo used to down an enemy by one. As it turns out though, those changes weren't all that popular, as sometimes happens with these things, and after a day after they were made, the Rogue Company team had announced that they would be gathering data on the changes to make proper adjustments. The post stated that they'd be spending the next few weeks going over the data, but it looks like they didn't need that long. So this week, First Watch Games announced that they'd be releasing a hotfix across all the platforms that would roll back the body shot changes in order to address the negative impact they've had on gameplay. And for the most part, players seem fairly pleased with this outcome, even thanking the dev team for listening to them. Aw, a happy ever after ending. Coming in at story number four, the Epic vs. Apple trial continues apace, and while there hasn't been any amazing new finds like in one of our previous episodes, there were a few little discoveries and legally binding statements both main parties involved here. So here's the main one that's been a bit of a head scratcher. Roblox users don't create games. That's right, after all these years, Roblox argued that what its users are creating are experiences and that the company has edited nearly every mention of games on its websites to experiences. In addition, its in-app menus have changed from games to discovery. Now, why the switch? It's because Apple argued if Roblox's experiences were games, then Roblox would essentially be marketing games within a game in the App Store, with creators being paid for their efforts and circumventing the apps store fees, not unlike what Epic tried to do with Fortnite. In addition, each game might need to be listed separately on the App Store, which would be an obvious nightmare. Thus, legally, no one creates games in Roblox anymore, and no one ever has, apparently. Moving into story number three, the team behind Destiny 2 has a bit of a rough PR trip for a few weeks now. From bugs to patches to even the accidental early release and then revoking of crossplay features, yeah, it just hasn't been all sunshine and roses over there in the D2 community. If you remember last week, we talked a little bit about Bungie's newest season and the upcoming transmog system for its latest season. At that time, there were fans who were already seeing problems with this brand new system, as it seemed that it was always pushing you to spend money to speed up the process. And the initial blowback was because of the caps placed on the player's ability to farm up the material needed in order to unlock transmogging for armor pieces. And then having lower caps based on each season meant that you had to grind to get to the cap, but once at cap, you couldn't transmog any more pieces until the next season. Well, now that players have gotten the chance Chance to experience this brand new season, it seems that the grind to get to this cap is so deep that getting to the cap itself is virtually impossible for everyday players and a pipe dream for casual players unless you pony up some cash to help out of course. Reddit user i 3 b who also claims to be in the top 3% of players based off of playtime for each season, says that it, he took it one step further and ran the math to show that even playing as much as they do, roughly 21 full days each year, they will still fall short of making the cap for all four seasons by almost six full days of yearly playtime. Now, this system is a straight up mess and really is just flat out greedy for a game that has so many other monetization avenues already built in, not least of which is that expansions are still an item that you have to purchase if you want to play that aren't included in the free to play experience. So what we expect probably is that they're going to definitely do some sort of reversal to this system sometime soon, one that will be probably mediocre at best, but we'll still see some praise some out there for being better than, of course, what they have right now. And coming in hot for story number two, as if you couldn't tell from its recent announcement, Ubisoft is going to be taking a bigger push for free-to-play games in the future. In its full year earnings call from earlier last week, the developer and publisher said that it was building high-end free-to-play games to be trending towards AAA ambitions over the long term. Overall though, thinking about this brand new decision from Ubisoft to focus on more free-to-play titles is really just the big case of a big developer realizing that there's still a ton of money to be made outside of the traditional boxed game market. It's a sort of everyone else is doing it, so why don't we situation. As for games trending towards AAA, I think that's still a bit of a mental block for some people who still lump free-to-play games with the cheaply made low-quality games. There certainly are plenty of those free-to-play and paid, but there's also plenty of high production values in top-tier graphics. Warzone is a spinoff of a major AAA game, but there's also a bunch of standalone free-to-play games like Apex Legends, Guild Wars 2, Genshin Impact, and even Fortnite that no one would even think of as being low-grade. Ubisoft likely won't skimp out on the budget for whatever it makes in the future, but don't invest too much money in a company's likely future claims that its games represent some kind of pinnacle of free-to-play design or polish. And speaking about that, we move into our number one story, the biggest story of the week. Now we've made some guesses on what kind of game Ubisoft's The Division Heartlands will be, but there's been no gameplay details revealed about it since its surprise announcement last week. 
as often with these situations, of course, someone just couldn't help themselves and of course leaked some classified information. A brief video has surfaced of lead game designer Taylor Epley informing potential testers of what to expect in the game while also letting them know about the whole thing being under NDA. Of course, that didn't matter to one person as they just leaked this piece of information regardless. And since it's out there, we are more than welcome to talk a little bit about that. He basically says for this Division experience that it's a brand new free-to-play open world survival action shooter that's moving from the big cities to a small town in America called Silver Creek. You'll come to know Silver Creek and its mysterious story through a co-op PvE mode called Expedition. Then, once prepared, you'll hop into a 45 PvEVP mode called Storm. Both modes will have you scavenging, exploring, looting, fighting, and surviving, all while avoiding the most aggressive and unpredictable virus contaminations the Division has ever seen. Of course, we'll be looking out for this game very soon, and we'll be covering it on the website. And that moves us to the question of the week. With this leaked news of what the new free to play division game is gonna be like, let me know in the comment section below if it's caught your interest and you're interested in trying it out, or if it's not really your taste. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. And these are your top five stories for this week's free to play weekly. Don't forget to check out MMOBomb.com for giveaways and the latest news. My name's Ethos, and I'll catch you guys later. Peace out, everyone.